This video will discuss the Debye T cubed law for the constant pressure heat capacities of solids at very low temperatures. So from our previous videos we showed how we can get the entropy of any substance at a given temperature by integrating uh, the heat capacity divided by the temperature from 0 Kelvin up to the given temperature. So that's all very good if we know what the heat capacity of our given system is at that temperature. But some weird things start happening as you approach 0 Kelvin. And uh, this, what, that's what this video is going to discuss. So the Debye T cube law says that the constant pressure heat capacity of a solid is going to be proportional to the cube of the temperature as the temperature approaches 0. So this really comes into play below about 15 Kelvin, where a lot of the kind of high temperature approximations that we've been making that we saw in our statistical mechanics chapter uh, for various partition functions and various other properties. A lot of things start to break down as you get to very low temperatures, as you get very few states that are occupied, and uh, a lot of your laws start to break down. So this shows that since our heat capacity is proportional to T cubed, this means that the limit of our heat capacity as the temperature goes to zero is zero. So the heat capacity of our system at, a, at zero Kelvin is going to be approaching zero. So any, uh, any absorbing or any external heat coming into the system is going to result in the temperature increasing at zero Kelvin because we don't have any capacity to absorb that heat. It's going to instantly result in some uh, non-negligible amount of temperature increase. And this is, one, this is one of many reasons why it's very, very hard to get things uh, very, very close to absolute zero for temperature, in addition to a variety of other reasons. Okay, uh, for systems called metallic solids, so things generally composed out of metals that can conduct electrons very well, um, this Debye law says that the constant pressure heat capacity of those solids is equal to a constant times temperature plus another constant times temperature cubed. What we're primarily interested in here are things that are non-metallic solids, um, so things like um, things in the, in the P block or noble gases or things near the top of the periodic table where <clears throat> as the temperature approaches zero, what we have is that the constant pressure heat capacity of that solid is equal to just a constant times T cubed. We don't have this uh, linear term in temperature which comes about due to the uh, uh, solid's ability to conduct electrons. And as I mentioned, all these are just constants. So whenever something is proportional to something, it's equal to whatever it's proportional to times a constant. Okay, so if we wanted to find the entropy of a substance at a very low temperature, we would take that the entropy of that system is equal to the integral from zero to that temperature of the constant pressure heat capacity of the solid divided by temperature integrated over temperature. So for below about 15 Kelvin, where this Debye T cubed law is very important, we'd have that the integral is equal to, well, we'd have C times T cubed over t, which gives us uh, c times t squared. And the integral of c t squared would be 1 third c t cubed. So if the heat capacity is proportional to t cubed, not only is the heat cap capacity proportional to t cubed, but the entropy will be proportional to t cubed as well. But whatever, uh, whatever constant it has, the entropy is going to be about a third of that. So if we map out on a graph from about 0 to 15 Kelvin, what this approximation is going to say. We have our heat capacity looking like a uh, cubic function, function of T cubed, and then the entropy of that system is going to be one third of that value going up starting from 0 and then increasing as T cubed, but with a lower proportionality constant up to 15 Kelvin. Then above that, some of our regular uh, approximations start, start to come into play. We can start using some of the more ideas about those partition functions that we derived uh, in the statistical mechanics chapter. And uh, there's much more, uh, there's a, a wider variety of expressions for heat capacities of substances that we can use as approximations that are not at these very, very low temperatures.